no doubt need to thank God for making it this far. How many are glad they made it this far? I was just checking the news and just today, 30 people in the Kenya on the road going somewhere killed. Another eight or six in Australia, something happened. They can't say Happy New Year, but you will say it. You see, we do this because we are thanking God for what he has done and going into the new year with purpose, with a new drive. Hallelujah. And for the whole of KICC, we have declared the coming year as a year of unusual rest and uncommon presence. Amen. Oh, come on, say a good amen. amen. Unusual rest and uncommon presence. And the scripture that comes to mind with that is Exodus 33 verse 14. And he said, my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. He told Moses that as you are going into the new year, his presence is going with you. And you will have rest. No evil will befall you. No plague will come near your dwelling. That will be your portion. Hallelujah. Now, there are no doubt a few keys to experiencing rest and his presence. The number one thing is to trust in God. Tell your neighbor, trust in God. Those who trust in the Lord, they shall be like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but abided forever. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thou will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. Then secondly, believe his word. The days are evil. And just the message of the United Nations Secretary General today, he, he, he was giving a red alert to the whole world. As the Secretary of the United Nations. That tells you, as a child of God, we also are coming to the culmination and the end of all things. And that's why you must know how to trust God and believe his word for yourself and every day living for everything that comes because there are issues that come. With no matter how much we have prayed, there are challenges we will face. But through God, we shall do valiantly. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the third thing is confessing his word. Confessing what? His word. Anywhere you go, declare the mind of Jesus. Speak his word unashamed. Declare who you are in Christ Jesus. I'm a child of the king. I am blessed and highly favored. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. The righteousness which is of faith speaks. Whatever you believe that God will perfect in your life in 2018, you confess it. You declare it, no matter what you face. From January till December, confess his word. Hallelujah. Number four, asking in prayer for his will to be done throughout the year. In major and minor matters of your life, ask for his will to be done. So that you don't miss your way. And you will not miss your way. Ask God. You know, when he taught his disciples to pray, he said they should pray this way. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Those are the things that brings you to a place of rest when you are saying, God, I trust you. I believe in you. I believe your word. And I'm confessing your word. And I'm resting in your plan and purpose for my life. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in my family, in my home, in my business, in my career, as it is in heaven. And the last one, is dying to yourself. Look at your neighbor, tell them, you need to die to yourself somewhere. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> they may not like you anymore, but that's okay. 
die to yourself. The more you die to your own will and aggression and the fact that I've got to be this, I've got to do that, the more God takes over. When you are not struggling anymore, God starts to work. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you're no longer thinking that it's all up to you and you leave it in his hands, it takes over. And that's part of dying to yourself and your own self-will. And then you learn to take good advice from people. Don't think that every statement made about what you do or you is an attack on your person. Some of the levels that many of us are here tonight believing God for in 2018, people will give you advice and those advice sometimes or what they will say will seem like they are coming against you, but you take it on because it is meant to take you to your next level. I got this from somewhere. Somebody was saying something. He said, one of the problems of a lot of people is trying not to lose in life. He said, trying not to lose is different from striving to win. Trying not to lose is from a negative, fearful perspective and will bring a lot of unrest in your life. When all you are trying to do is, I don't want to fail, I don't want to fail, I don't want to lose. But striving to win is from a positive, faith-filled angle and makes you apply yourself with confidence to the task you have and hope in all your endeavors. When you know within you that I've been called to rule in life, that I'm a winner, you approach things differently. You approach with the mind of winning, not with the mind of I don't want to lose. A person who is fighting from the point of I don't want to lose, they will fight with fear. They will have so much unrest in them. If you approach an exam from a perspective of I don't want to fail, rather than I want to succeed, there is a different approach. And trying not to lose is when flesh is so involved. Rather than, I'm doing this because God says, I am meant to prosper. I'm doing this because God says, I am meant to possess possessions. I'm meant to be a blessing. You know, I'm meant to influence my generation. Once you come from that angle, you will be confident in the affairs of life. There will be rest in your soul. Because he's the one who is going to be walking in you, both to will and to do of his own good pleasure. Ephesians 3.20 says, he's able to do exceedingly above what we ask or think, according to the power that is at work in us. That power is going with you to 2018. You will not fail. You will not fall. You will not stumble. Stand to your feet, everybody. Stand to your feet. Ah, thank you, Jesus.